Chapter 2901, Can We Have a Private Chat? If she broke up with Liu Oyuns, she might not be able to meet such a quality man again. After all, Liu Oyuns's background was much better than hers. Kin Yui completely had lost her appetite, but she still forced herself to eat some food in order to not be found out by the others. Although she ate little, she kept on eating. Liu Oyuns would quarrel with her if he found out what she was thinking. At that time, he might break up with her in anger, which would be her loss. Anyway, no matter how handsome or rich Leng Shouting was, he wasn't her husband and he already had a very outstanding wife so he wouldn't have any interest in her. She was jealous of Gunning, but she could never become her. Thinking of that, Kin Yui Wu felt much better. Gunning and Leng Shouting just had a large meal, so they weren't able to eat a lot right now. Nevertheless, they didn't order much and finished most of it, so it wasn't a waste. Are you free tonight? Why don't we hang out at the clubhouse? My treat, Ren Weiming said when they had almost finished the meal. Hearing that, Leng Shouting didn't answer right away, but turned to look at Gunning, asking for her opinion. If Gunning wanted to go, he would go with her. As long as it wasn't about work, he would always ask for Gunning's opinion first. Leng Shouting's behavior, however, surprised the others because it proved how much he cared about Gunning. Why not? Gunning replied. Anyway, they had nothing to deal with. Since it was his friend's invitation, they ought to go. Otherwise, his friend would be embarrassed. After that, they rested for a while before going to have fun together. Both Gunning and Leng Shouting could drink, so they drank a lot. At 11 p.m., they separated. Gunning and Leng Shouting were picked up by the same chauffeur and returned to the house by the sea. Dot. Gano sent Iko to the hospital, but he didn't wake up until 8 p.m. Only his family took care of him. Gano didn't tell his family what he had done to save his face. As for why he suddenly passed out, Gano explained that it was food poisoning. After Silo and Tasha got back home, they couldn't stop thinking about what had happened to them on the small island. They were full of fear. In the middle of the night, they managed to fall asleep, but not long after, they were woken up again by a nightmare. They dreamed about a giant python coming to eat them alive. Dot. The next day at 2 p.m., the photography team arrived. Gunning and Leng Shouting weren't in a rush to take wedding photos because they needed time to choose a beautiful scene. At the same time, they also wanted to have a tour around. It wasn't easy for them to travel abroad and it was free. Although there were beautiful scenes everywhere, they still needed to choose their favorite place. Therefore, Gunning and Leng Shouting walked around for the day. After another day, they started taking the wedding photos. Because they liked the ocean, they took photos near the house by the sea with an open island not far away. Whenever they showed up among the crowd, they attracted a lot of attention. Everyone was amazed by their outstanding appearances. Some people even though they were models, because they were energetic, they didn't feel tired. So within a day, they finished. However, when they were taking photos, Leng Shouting had almost the same expression from the beginning to the end. After all, he wasn't an extrovert, so it was hard for him to be active and make different poses. Anyway, Leng Shouting and Gunning were still a perfect match in the photos. Both of them really enjoyed it. Although there was only a faint smile on his face, his eyes were full of love. Gunning and Leng Shouting took four sets of wedding photos in all. Among them, Leng Shouting wore a military uniform in two, including camouflage and a formal suit. He was a soldier so it was more meaningful for him to take wedding photos in a military uniform. Leng Shouting looked even more handsome in a military uniform. Even the photographer team was stunned by him. Their boss's husband was the best among quality men. However, Gunning was also very outstanding among extraordinary girls, so they were a perfect match. When Leng Shouting took wedding photos in his military uniform, they avoided the crowd, in case it caused unnecessary trouble. After taking the wedding photos, Gunning and Leng Shouting invited the photography team to a big meal. The photography team could stay for two days before going home, after all, they flew a long distance to be here. The photography team felt so lucky. They were blessed to have such a generous boss. All the plane tickets, accommodation and meals were free. They barely spent any money during the trip. They only spent money when they needed to visit tourist attractions or if they wanted to buy some gifts. In fact, even if Gunning only paid for their plane tickets, 
they would still be willing to stay there for a few days. Gunning and Leng Shouting didn't rush to go home. Instead, they decided to stay for a week. On the fourth day, Gunning and Leng Shouting sailed a yacht after lunch. They decided to dive deep into the ocean to catch seafood or to go on an adventure on the nearby island. However, when they were about to sail, they saw a familiar yacht stopped by theirs. At a closer glance, they recognized that it was Gano's yacht. Gano and another man were on the yacht, but it was only the two of them. Gunning and Leng Shouting realized that Gano must have come for them, so they directly walked over. Gano immediately got out of the yacht and walked to Gunning and Leng Shouting as well. Hi, Mr. Leng, Mrs. Leng. Gano greeted them, then asked, Do you have some time? Can we have a private chat? Chapter 2902, Is it a trap? What is it? said Gunning. I heard from my friend that Mrs. Leng rescued a girl when they were attacked by a giant python on the island that day. I want to know whether you're really not afraid of pythons at all. Can you deal with it if you encounter one again? Gano asked. Gano asked that question because he needed them to solve a problem for him, otherwise he wouldn't have especially paid them a visit. Yeah, I can deal with several, let alone one. Gunning said. Hearing that, Gano was excited and asked at once. How about other wild and dangerous animals? I don't think it's a problem, Gunning replied. Well, if so, can you work with me to do one thing, Mrs. Leng and Mr. Leng? It's said that there is a deserted island a hundred kilometers away from the coast. There is a lot of treasure on this deserted island, but some ferocious beasts are guarding nearby. No one can get in or out of there safely. I'm not sure whether it's true because it has not been confirmed yet. I heard about it from my grandfather who had been there before, but he just went to the edge of the island and saw a lot of dead bodies on the beach, so he didn't dare to go in. Besides, the island is surrounded by fog all year round. One needs good luck to land on the island. Mr. Leng and Mrs. Leng, if you are willing to cooperate with us, I'll go back and ask my grandpa for the route. After we find the treasure, we can split it 50-50. If you don't want to do that, just forget it. After all, I can't be sure that there will be treasure and if there isn't our adventure will be meaningless, Gano said. It was just a proposal, he wouldn't force them. Whether or not Gunning and Leng Shouting were interested was totally up to them. Gano had only met Gunning and Leng Shouting once so it might not seem serious since he talked to them about it right away. After all, he barely knew them. There was no trust between them either. However, compared with other people he knew, they were the best choice. First, they could easily beat a giant python, so they were obviously very strong. Second, they weren't local citizens, and they would leave after finishing it. Adventures were always risky, so he needed to bet on that. Anyway, he had a good impression of Gunning and Leng Shouting and didn't feel as if they seemed like backstabbers. Otherwise he wouldn't be so honest with them. If Gunning and Leng Shouting dared to betray them, he wouldn't hesitate to pay them back. Sure, we also love adventures. Whether there is treasure or not, we can go and have a look. Gunning agreed without hesitation because they were anyway planning to have some fun. Therefore they were willing to pay a visit whether or not there was treasure. However, if there was, it would obviously be better. Given their abilities, they weren't afraid that Gano would scheme against them. If Gano regretted it after they found treasure, Gunning and Leng Shouting would take the treasure for themselves. They wouldn't betray him first, but they wouldn't back down if Gano dared to do that to them. Gano didn't expect Gunning to agree so quickly, so he was surprised. Gunning could see his reaction, so she didn't urge him to give her a reply. Before long, Gano came back to his senses but he still wanted to make sure. Mrs. Leng, do you agree? Yes, we agree, Gunning said in an affirmative tone. Hearing that, Gano was satisfied. Great, I'll go back and ask my grandpa for a detailed map right now. If it's possible, I hope we can set out at 8 p.m. If we do it during the day, other people will see us. No problem. Gunning answered. Then Gano and his friend left while Gunning and Leng Shouting continued with what they were doing. After all, it was still early. Gano, why did they agree so fast? Is it a trap? I don't have much trust in them. We've only met them once, Gano's friend said worriedly. He didn't think there was much trust between them. Billy, I understand your worries, but I think they're my best choice. We can't find anyone who's better than them, Gano said. He also had worries and was afraid that they might betray him after finding treasure, 
but it was unavoidable to take the risk if he wanted to get the treasure. Since Gano said that, Billy said nothing further. He didn't want to be so negative, and also hoped that there would be a good result. Dot. Gunning and Leng Shouting went to the sea and dived deep to catch some seafood. They sailed for a round before coming back. When they were back, it was time for dinner. So Gunning watched TV in the living room while Leng Shouting went to cook. She was like a queen. But Leng Shouting felt that it was his honor to be able to serve her. After filling their stomachs, they went for a walk outside. Half an hour later, Gano and Billy arrived. There were only two of them because they didn't want other people to see them. When Gano went home and asked his grandfather for the route, his grandfather turned him down at first, because it was too dangerous. He didn't want his beloved grandson to face such a dangerous adventure. Gano spent a long time persuading his grandfather before his grandfather agreed. Honestly, his grandfather didn't think they would find the island. There was no need for the four of them to go with two yachts. One yacht was enough. So Gunning and Leng Shouting went on Gano's yacht. Although Gano had the map, it wasn't very useful. After all, they were sailing on the ocean instead of driving on the road. There was water in every direction, so they had to reach their destination by guessing. As a result, although the yacht moved fast, they spent two hours on the way. In addition, they relied on Gunning's guidance to arrive at their destination, because Gunning had a pair of jade eyes which could see much farther than a telescope. Chapter 2903, Is it safe to drive so fast? However, Gunning could only see the area around the island. Because it was covered in fog, she couldn't see what was inside. Seeing the thick fog, Gano and Billy were both extremely disappointed. It seems our trip is meaningless, Gano said resignedly. Although he was mentally prepared, he was still sad. Yay, I'm afraid we have to go back now, Billy said. Mr. Leng, Mrs. Leng, I'm very sorry. Gano apologized to Leng Shouting and Gunning. He had explained to them before and they didn't care, but he felt it was necessary for him to apologize. Mr. Tyler, there is no need to apologize. If this little fog can be a difficulty, I wouldn't have agreed to help, Gunning replied. She didn't think it was a problem at all. Hearing that, Gano and Billy agreed with Gunning, but they felt that she was too confident. They didn't doubt her abilities but they wouldn't be convinced until Gunning proved it to them. I know you're doubtful. It's understandable. We've just met, but it's unavoidable to take risks since we want the treasure. Do you dare to go inside with us? Gunning asked. She didn't think it was wrong that Gano and Billy doubted her abilities. It would be weird if they didn't. It wasn't a good thing to easily trust strangers. Gano and Billy remained silent for a few moments. Then Gano said, of course. Let's go inside together. Since we're already here, we must give it a try. No one knows what will happen if we don't go inside, Billy said. He was panicked too, but he was reluctant to leave right now. He was an adventurous person, so he was willing to take the risk. Moreover, Gano and Billy had learned some fighting skills. They weren't extremely skilled, but they were better than most people, so they were braver too. If so, Let's go inside right now. I don't want people nearby to see us, since it will cause unnecessary trouble. Let me drive this time, Leng Shouting said. Upon hearing that there were people nearby, Gano and Billy let Leng Shouting drive the yacht. Gunning also exchanged seats with Billy and sat in the front passenger seat. None of them was surprised that there were people nearby, because not only they were aware that there was treasure on this island, since there was treasure, it naturally attracted many treasure hunters. The next moment, Leng Shouting directly drove into the thick fog. Visibility in the fog was very low, only three or four meters in radius, so ordinary people wouldn't dare to enter, but that was the visibility for ordinary people. For Gunning and Leng Shouting, the visibility was about ten meters. Even if the visibility was low, their spiritual consciousness wasn't worse than their eyes. In some cases, it was better and more useful than vision. Just like the situation they were in right now where they couldn't see where the island was. If it wasn't far away, they could use their spiritual consciousness to sense the surroundings and figure out where it was. With or without obstacles, the sound and direction of the wind and waves were different. However, obviously the island was still far away, so Leng Shouting and Gunning couldn't sense it yet. The Mer was also surprised when he heard Old Man Tang call. Because the fog was dense, Gunning couldn't see the island with her jade eyes, but they could go forward at a fast speed. 
They didn't need to worry about hitting anything. Although they weren't sure the destination was in front of them, they at least wouldn't lose their way. However, Gano and Billy were astonished by the speed at which Leng Shouting was sailing the yacht. They were extremely scared. It was even scarier than racing a car on twisting mountain roads. Mr. Leng, is it safe to drive so fast? Gano asked, because he was really scared. His voice trembled a bit. Don't worry, it's fine, Leng Shouting replied. Gano and Billy were still nervous and felt like they could die at any moment, but since Leng Shouting said it was fine, they didn't doubt him again. Shortly after they went into the thick fog, another group of people reached the edge of it. They stopped at once, and hesitated to go inside. They could find a way out. After going in, but it would be really difficult. If the yacht was filled with fuel and they had enough food, they wouldn't be afraid, but what if they ran out of gas and food, then got stuck inside? After hesitating for a while, they still decided to go inside. Before they came here, they were aware that this place was covered in thick fog almost constantly. It was nearly impossible to visit here without the fog. Since they wanted the treasure, they had to take the risk. Anyway, they were fully prepared for the adventure before they came. After going into it, they became very slow. Gunning, on the other hand, soon saw the island after driving in the fog for about seven minutes. However, only Gunning and Leng Shouting could see it, while Gano and Billy could see nothing. As they approached the island, Leng Shouting slowed down. At the same time, they sensed the faint magical power in the air. It wasn't strange. Normally, places isolated from the world had some magical power. When Leng Shouting slowed down, Gano and Billy were confused. They thought that something went wrong, but they soon saw land. Was it the island? Have we arrived? Gano asked excitedly. He couldn't believe that it could be so easy. After all, he could hardly do that on his own. It seemed that Leng Shouting and Gunning were a lot more useful than he thought. Meanwhile, they were still anxious. They felt lucky that they turned to the right people for help, but they were afraid that Gunning and Leng Shouting might want to keep all the treasure. If so, it was impossible for him and Billy to fight back. Chapter 2904 run into pythons. No matter what, they had to continue to bet on that since they were already here. Right. Gunning said, by now you should believe that we can do it. Of course, of course. Gano and Billy answered. Earlier they weren't really able to believe Leng Shouting and Gunning, but now, they were fully convinced. However, they still had doubts and worries. They wondered whether there was really treasure on this island, or whether they could find the treasure. If they found it, would Gunning and Leng Shouting keep the treasure for themselves? How did you do it? It's so unbelievable, Billy asked curiously. It's not really difficult. You only need to be brave and determined. As long as you are, you won't lose your direction. Keep driving ahead, that way you can leave this place even if you can't reach the island, Gunning replied. Hearing that, Gano and Billy nodded. After the yacht stopped beside the island they got out. The fog is so thick. Can we really find the way back? Billy asked worriedly. I believe Mr. Leng and Mrs. Leng can deal with it, right? Gano turned to look at Gunning and Leng shouting. Sure. Gunning said, we can stop the yacht right here. Everything will be fine. My husband and I have a very good memory. We can remember every road we take. There is no need to worry that we'll get lost. We might only take a bit longer on our way home. Great. Gano and Billy were relieved. Afterwards, they stepped onto the island. This island was surrounded by thick fog, so ordinary people could never find the treasure even if there was really treasure. However, it was different for Gunning and Leng Shouting. As long as there was treasure, they would find it. They relied on Gunning's jade eyes to search for it. The treasure might be hidden in a part of the island, or at the bottom of the nearby sea, or in the middle of the island. Therefore, they needed to search from the side that they stopped the boat. Gunning had ordered the flood dragon to check the bottom of the sea, so it swam over with them when they came and now it was looking around in the nearby sea to see what it could find. Gano and Billy followed Gunning and Leng Shouting. They were completely under the leadership of Gunning and Leng Shouting, because they had no idea what to do. Therefore, they had to follow Gunning and Leng Shouting closely otherwise they would be in a lot of danger if they got lost. I don't know what to do, but I don't think it is a good idea for us to walk and look around like this, Billy said. Even if there was treasure, it should be buried, so it was probably impossible for them to find the treasure like that. If it was so easy to find the treasure, 
it would have been dug out earlier. After all, the rumor about the treasure had gone around for at least a hundred years. When their grandparents were young, they had heard about that. But what can we do to find it? Gano asked. Although he knew it wasn't a good idea, he had no idea how to search for the treasure. Gunning and Leng Shouting said nothing. They continued to walk and look for the treasure. The island wasn't large, but it still took them an hour to walk from one end to the other. When they finished the third path, they encountered a giant python. Gano and Billy were frightened the moment they saw the python. They immediately had goosebumps and felt very uncomfortable, but after Leng Shouting punched it, the giant python immediately fell to the ground and it seemed to die, which shocked Gano. He had heard about it from Tasha and Gunning had verified that they could kill pythons, but they were still surprised when they saw it with their own eyes. It was totally different to really see it. Jesus, that's so unbelievable. Billy exclaimed. It's indeed amazing. Gano agreed. Although they could kill this giant python too, it would take him a couple of minutes while Ling Shouting killed it in a second. After that, they continued to walk. Along the way, they came across many insects, snakes, and rats, but Ling Shouting got rid of them with his magical energy, so Gano and Billy didn't see them. After walking forward for a while, they heard noises around. Something was slithering over. Gunning immediately used her jade eyes to see it and saw a group of pythons coming towards them. There should be five pythons. Honestly, even if there were fifty pythons, they wouldn't be afraid, let alone five. Wait here, I'll be right back, Leng Shouting said, then he walked away. Where is he going? Gano asked. He didn't think Leng Shouting was abandoning them. Because Gunning stayed. There are noises. There should be pythons, and he's going to deal with them, Gunning replied. Hearing that, both Gano and Billy were astonished. Pythons? Why didn't they see them? Anyway, Leng Shouting was so strong that they believed that he could see what they couldn't. It was normal, so they admired Gunning more than ever now. Once Leng Shouting met the group of pythons, he released his magical energy and killed all of them in a second, so before long, Leng Shouting was back. About an hour later, they finally reached the other end of the island. They had run into other snakes, rats, and insects, but Gunning and Leng Shouting quickly got rid of them. When they reached the other end, Gunning and Leng Shouting felt the flood dragon was floating at the surface. Please wait here. I need to go there for a moment. Afterwards, she walked away. Gano and Billy thought that Gunning was going to do something private, so they didn't think much about it. Gunning stopped after waking far away, then the flood dragon swam over. Did you find the treasure? asked Gunning. We're not sure but we saw a cave entrance under the side. We didn't go in and came to see you first, the female white flood dragon replied. Where is it? Gunning asked, although the flood dragon wasn't sure of it yet, Gunning felt that it was highly likely to be it. She wondered whether there was really treasure. Chapter 2905, No Need to Doubt. It's about 300 meters to the right, but there is a cliff about 100 meters ahead. So if you want to go there, you have to go over the sea, or climb up the mountains, the black flood dragon said. The entrance of the cave is at the bottom of the cliff on the other side, where the waves are very strong. It's very dangerous for ordinary people, the female flood dragon chimed in. Gano and Billy were ordinary people, but Gunning and Leng Shouting weren't, so they wouldn't think that it was dangerous. Sure, you can go over and have a look first. If there are any monsters, kill them. I'll be there soon. Gunning said, yes, master, the flood dragon replied, then left. Gunning also returned to Leng Shouting's side. Leng Shouting heard Gunning's conversation with the flood dragon, but Gano and Billy didn't. After Gunning came back, they walked to the cave. Gunning and Leng Shouting said nothing. They were leading the way, so Gano and Billy just followed them. No matter where Gunning and Leng Shouting took them, Gano and Billy wouldn't say anything because they had no idea where they should go. After walking for about 200 meters, they saw a mountain. The altitude of the mountain was about 40 to 50 meters, which wasn't high at all, but the mountain path was rugged. It was difficult for Gano and Billy to climb over, even though both of them were strong, but Gunning and Leng Shouting couldn't take them over by flying, nor could they fly there before them. As a result, they could only climb up the mountain together. They could take another way, but it would cost them more time. They might spend too much time on the way, 
so they decided to climb up the mountain in the end. This place was covered in fog and it was night, so although Gunning had a pair of jade eyes, she still couldn't see far ahead. Leng Shouting used a rope to tie his waist, then fastened it to their waists. In that case, even if their feet slipped, they wouldn't fall off the mountain. At most, they would just hit themselves a little. Do we need to climb up from here? Gano asked in front of the mountain. He couldn't see how high it was, but he could see that it was a mountain. Right. Gunning replied. Is it high? Will it be dangerous after we climb up? Billy asked worriedly. It was a dangerous adventure to find the treasure. Where will you hide your treasure, if you have any, to prevent other people from finding it? And to make sure that even if anyone finds it, he can't take it away. Gunning replied. Somewhere dangerous? Billy said subconsciously, since he was going to hide the treasure, he would do his best to stop other people from finding it by storing it in a dangerous place. Right, normally, treasure is hidden in a dangerous place so that it is impossible for ordinary people to find. Ordinary people might not dare to go there either. But I think it would still have to be accessible otherwise the treasure can't be hidden there. I once searched for treasure on a small island as well. The treasure was hidden under a dangerous cliff while the entrance was at the bottom of the sea. So, I thought it might be the same case this time. Because the waves under the cliff are relatively large, it's difficult for ordinary people to go in, but it still allows people to get inside. It's just that people who don't have enough abilities can't go in, and most people would not imagine that the treasure would be hidden in such a precipitous place. In most people's eyes, where they can't go, others can't go either, Gunning said. Hearing that, Gano and Billy agreed. At the same time, they were surprised to know that Gunning had searched for treasure at such a dangerous and unobtrusive place before. Anyway, since she had succeeded once, she must have the skills to do so. Their intuition also told them that if there was really treasure, they would definitely find it. If so, we'll continue to follow you. We won't say anything again, Gano said. They invited Gunning and Leng Shouting to come with them but they found that they themselves were useless after coming here. They relied on Gunning and Leng Shouting to do everything. If it hadn't been for Gunning and Leng Shouting, they could have gotten lost or starved to death even if they could successfully get here. They could handle one or two pythons, but it was impossible for them to kill more. After that, Gunning took out ropes from her backpack telepathic eye space. Seeing that, Billy asked curiously, Mrs. Leng, what are you doing? This mountain is very rugged and dangerous. In case any accidents happen, you should both tie a rope around your waist, then tie the other end around my husband's waist. If anything happens to you, he can help you, Gunning said. What? Hearing that, Gano and Billy were surprised. They glanced at Gunning, then at Leng shouting. They couldn't believe their ears. Mrs. Leng, did you say that we can tie the end of this rope to our waist? while the other to your husband's waist? Gano asked. Right, you heard it right. My husband can easily beat a giant python with a punch, and you've witnessed that, but my husband can do more than just that. He's much more powerful than you can believe. Never doubt his abilities, Gunning said seriously. Gano and Billy nodded and realized that Leng Shouting was stronger than they could imagine. They didn't doubt Gunning's words. Therefore, they listened to her in the end. They tied the end of the rope to their waists, and the other end was fastened to Leng Shouting's waist. Afterwards, they set out. Gunning climbed up by herself because it was very easy for her. At the beginning, Gano and Billy were worried about Gunning, but they were relieved after seeing that she was more relaxed than them. At the same time, they had great respect for Gunning. They never thought highly of women, although there were outstanding women. They were very few. However, now they had to admit that Gunning was really unbelievable. The mountain was more difficult to climb than Gano and Billy had imagined, so they used a lot of effort. Halfway through, Gano and Billy had each slipped once. Chapter 2906, We Dare. However, it wasn't serious. Even if they hadn't been tied to the rope, they wouldn't fall because they were able to grab onto stones. Unfortunately, when they finished two thirds of the road, Billy slipped again. This time, his whole body fell, and he broke out in a cold sweat. Luckily, he only fell a meter down. After the rope went taut, he was caught and he felt relieved. Without delay, he caught the branch near him, then placed his feet on the ground to stabilize himself. Gano was scared. Without the rope, 
Billy could have fallen down at that moment. It should be more than 20 meters high, and the reefs were sharp, so he might lose his life if he fell. Thank you so much, Mr. Leng. Billy sincerely thanked Leng Shouting after calming down. You're welcome, Leng Shouting said. After the accident, Gano and Billy were more grateful to Leng Shouting and Gunning. They even felt that they were a burden on them. However, they needed Gunning and Leng Shouting's help, because they couldn't climb over this mountain on their own. They didn't spend much time on the climb. With Leng Shouting's help, Gano and Billy saved some energy. However, both of them were tired. So Gunning and Leng Shouting told them to have a rest before they continued to climb. After they reached the top of the mountain, they still needed to walk for about a hundred meters and the road was uneven, but it wasn't so difficult for Gano and Billy now. Although Gano and Billy were curious to know where Gunning and Leng Shouting would start searching for the cave, they said nothing. They just silently followed Gunning and Leng Shouting. After reaching the top of the mountain, they had to climb down. This side wasn't so rugged but it was still hard. Besides, it was more dangerous to climb down than it was to climb up, so they didn't untie the rope. Gano and Billy didn't run into any trouble this time, because they were more cautious than they were earlier. Once they reached the foot of the mountain, they were very close to the cave. It was only 10 meters away from them, but it was the most difficult part of their journey. The huge waves crashed on the reef causing a loud noise. It was so powerful that it could kill people. Gano and Billy couldn't help feeling uneasy. They had been on adventures before, but now they were in a much more difficult situation. The waves are so large. Billy exclaimed. He was worried, and felt that it would be difficult for them to get in. Gano turned to look at Gunning and Leng shouting to see what they would do. We're not afraid, but do you dare to take the risk with us? We can make sure that you won't die. But I can't promise that you won't be injured, Gunning said. Actually, Gunning could protect them from being injured, but it would expose her secret, so she wouldn't do that. Of course we dare. Gano immediately answered, not because of Gunning's words, but because he loved adventures. Yes. Billy answered. He was still anxious, but at that moment, his courage got the better of him. Gano and Billy had brought their own goggles and snorkel for diving. So now that they decided to go into the water, they took them out at once. Have you prepared goggles and a snorkel? Gano asked. If Leng Shouting and Gunning weren't prepared, they didn't know how they would share the equipment. We're good at swimming, so we don't need them, Gunning replied. Hearing that, both Gano and Billy were surprised, but they didn't doubt Gunning's words. After all, they had witnessed Gunning and Leng Shouting's abilities. We can have a rest for a while. We'll dive in about ten minutes, Gunning said. In fact, she and Leng Shouting didn't need a rest, but Gano and Billy needed to. Although they decided to go into the ocean and had summoned up their courage, they were still nervous. After all, it was an extremely dangerous decision. Ten minutes later, they went into the sea. When they had just dived into it, Billy was almost hit by a wave. Luckily, Leng Shouting caught him. Leng Shouting was at the front, Gano and Billy were in the middle, while Gunning was at the back. They made that arrangement to prevent Gano and Billy from having any accidents. Although they couldn't directly protect them with their magical energy, they could use their magical energy to weaken the power of the waves. Therefore, it was easier for Gano and Billy to swim. Gunning and Leng Shouting knew the location roughly but they couldn't swim straight to the destination. They needed to pretend to search for it for a while. Nevertheless, before long, they found the cave. It wasn't strange to find a cave at the bottom of the ocean, so Gano and Billy weren't surprised. Afterwards, they swam into it. By then they had stayed in the water for a long time. Both Gano and Billy were astonished by how good Gunning and Leng Shouting were at swimming. It was unbelievable that they could swim so long with one breath. After swimming into the cave, they went forward for 20 meters toward its end. Seeing the end, Gano and Billy thought it was over, but unexpectedly Leng Shouting directly swam upwards where there was an exit. Without delay, Gano and Billy floated up as well. P1 knees visit EN0 of 1 B in. Niti. Once Leng Shouting swam out, he took out his night luminescent pearl. Therefore, the cave was very bright when Gano and Billy tried to get out. When they saw another cave, they were surprised. What surprised them more was the bright object in Leng Shouting's hand. Gano asked, Mr. Leng, what is that? It can give light, 
which is really amazing. This is a very rare jewel. It's called the night luminescent pearl. It can shine in the dark. Leng Shouting replied, Wow, that's incredible. They were surprised and confused, but didn't ask about it further nor did they have the idea to steal it. After Ganning was out too, they continued to walk ahead with Ganning using her jade eyes to see what was around them. The second cave was very deep, so she didn't see anything yet. Chapter 2907. There is really treasure. However, she could feel the two flood dragons. Because the flood dragons directly swam over from the bottom of the ocean, they spent very little time getting there and they had already gotten rid of any other animals in the cave. In isolated caves like this, there were many snakes, insects, and rats which might be poisonous. Once ordinary people were bitten by these animals, they might die. Because the cave was covered in dust, it was rather gloomy and cold. Gunning and Leng Shouting didn't feel much, but Gano and Billy did. They were both wet, so the cold wind robbed them of more warmth. This cave was obviously artificially built, so it was highly likely that the treasure was hidden there. Was this cave built by people? Gano asked. He wasn't sure, because it looked natural to some extent. Because of the years. There weren't many traces left by people. You're right. It was built by people, so I think there might really be hidden treasure, Gunning said. Gano didn't know whether there was really treasure, but he felt it was very likely after coming here. Otherwise no one would build this cave. There might be something else hidden inside, but they believed it was highly likely to be treasure. Since they risked their lives to come here, they didn't want to return with empty hands. After walking for about five minutes, Gunning saw a chamber ahead, but there was nothing inside. She couldn't see any other passages either, this was the only way. However, Gunning was experienced so she knew that this empty chamber was just a trick to fool them. It was likely that the treasure was hidden next to this chamber and the stones blocked them. She hoped that there really was treasure. If not, it might not be a trick. When they reached the chamber, because the flood dragons had already knocked it open, they directly walked in. The ceiling of the chamber was very high with many rock pillars hanging from it. There were some gaps too. Even if people looked up, no one could see anything. Only Gunning and Leng Shouting could see the flood dragons hidden in the gaps at the top of the chamber. Because of Gano and Billy's presence, the flood dragons wouldn't show up or talk to Gunning or Leng Shouting. There was no other entrance in the chamber, so Gano and Billy showed disappointment. There is no way forward. I don't think there is treasure, Gano said. Well, I was mentally prepared before coming here, but it's still disappointing, Billy said. If it's so easy to find the treasure, it would have been stolen long ago. We won't have the chance at all. Did you see the cigarette butts? Obviously someone has been here before. I also observed the walls. I think this cave must have been built dozens of years ago. Cigarettes like this didn't exist back then. So this must have happened not too long ago, Gunning said, pointing at the cigarette butts on the ground. Hearing that, Gano and Billy were surprised. How could anyone visit such a secret place? However, since they could find this cave, other people could do the same thing. You're right. I think the treasure might be hidden somewhere else, Gano said. I encountered the same situation when I went to look for treasure. Everyone thought there wasn't treasure, but we still found it in the end. I found the treasure in a place where everyone thought there was nothing, Gunning said. Gano and Billy were shocked. They understood what Gunning was implying. Is it buried under the ground? Gano asked. It's possible, Gunning said. It wasn't a guess. But the answer. Gunning had used her jade eyes to look around the chamber before coming inside. She thought it was hidden behind the wall, but it turned out to be no buried in the ground. About 1.5 meters under the ground, eight boxes were buried. Each box was about 60 centimeters long and about 50 meters wide and high. Lots of pieces of treasure were stored inside. Some were already rotten while some were still in a good condition. The good ones were still worth a fortune. Do we need to dig a hole? Billy asked excitedly. Although they weren't sure, it was possible. Anyway, they needed to dig a hole to see whether there was treasure. But we don't have any tools, Gano said. It's necessary to carry tools when you go on adventures. You need more experience, Gunning said. Then she took out a hammer, a small hoe, a small shovel, and a dagger from her backpack. Actually, her backpack was just to cover. Those tools were stored in her telepathic eye space, but her backpack wasn't small, 
so it didn't look strange when she took those tools out. As a result, Gano and Billy were only surprised that Gunning took so many tools with her. They didn't think it was strange. They're small, but they are better than nothing. You can pick one, then we can start digging, Gunning said as she put the tools down on the ground. Although Gunning and Leng Shouting could directly remove the stones and soil with magical energy, they couldn't do it in front of Gano and Billy. They could only do it with their hands, but they could use their magical energy at the same time which would make it easier. Sure, Gano and Billy didn't hesitate and immediately picked up the tools to dig holes. They didn't think the tools were too small, because it was better than nothing. Gano and Billy each took a hoe and a shovel, because they didn't know how to use the hammer and dagger. They weren't as strong as Leng Shouting either, so they lacked the strength to remove the stones. Because the chamber wasn't large, the boxes were laid in a line and occupied half of the space. Therefore, Gano and Billy easily found the part where the boxes were hidden. Gunning and Leng Shouting began to remove stones too. The ground was made of stone and soil. The stones were big, so they needed to break them. Chapter 2908, Share the Treasure. A dagger could remove soil and small stones. Gano and Billy couldn't make full use of it, but Gunning and Leng Shouting could, because they didn't rely on a tool to do the work. Leng Shouting picked up the hammer, then smashed it towards the rocks on the ground. As soon as he hit it, the rocks on the ground broke into pieces, but the hammer wasn't damaged at all, which surprised Gano and Billy. Wow, this hammer is hard. Billy said in amazement. It wasn't damaged at all, Gano said. Gunning and Leng Shouting didn't explain and Gano and Billy didn't ask about it either. After that, they continued to dig holes. Gunning used a dagger, but she was much quicker than Gano and Billy which astonished them. They admitted that Gunning was stronger than them, but they didn't want to seem useless, so they used greater strength. After 20 minutes, they were exhausted, so Gunning told them to have a rest. When Gano and Billy regained some strength, they continued to work. They didn't want Leng Shouting and Gunning to think that they were lazy and wasted time. After all, they only did a little work. In order to take the boxes out, they dug a large pit which was about a meter wide, so it took them a lot of time. The four of them dug for about an hour before they finally touched the boxes. The moment Gano and Billy saw the boxes, they were stunned. They weren't sure whether it was the treasure they were looking for, but they believed that it was highly likely. Normally, boxes wouldn't be hidden under the ground. Only Gunning and Leng Shouting stayed calm. Leng Shouting didn't see the boxes, but he knew there must be treasure since Gunning decided to dig a hole here because Gano and Billy were too excited. They didn't notice Gunning and Leng Shouting's reaction. Is this the treasure? Billy asked excitedly. I think so, Gano said. Let's take it out, Gunning said. Then Leng Shouting jumped down and moved a box up. Can we open it? Gano asked Gunning. He couldn't wait to open it, but subconsciously asked for Gunning and Leng Shouting's opinions. Of course, said Gunning. The box was locked but it was already damaged after so many years, so it couldn't be easier for them to open. In this box, there was China from country and other countries. Seeing that, Gano and Billy were finally sure that this was really the treasure. We're so lucky. We found it so fast, Gano exclaimed. They were lucky? Of course not. It was Gunning and Leng Shouting's abilities, but Gunning and Leng Shouting didn't bother to tell them the truth. Is it worth a lot of money? Billy asked. He barely knew anything about it. No idea. But what's the use of this? Gano asked. He was slightly disappointed. We'll know soon. Gunning said. Because they didn't know anything about China, she didn't talk to them about it. Afterwards, Leng Shouting moved the other boxes up, and they opened them. One was full of jewelry and jewels, which was obviously valuable. Gano and Billy were excited in an instant. Jesus. There is so much jewelry and jewels, and they're very large. This box must be extremely valuable, Gano and Billy exclaimed. As more and more boxes were brought up, Gano and Billy were shocked again and again. After all eight boxes were opened, they could see that three were already rotten, so they dumped them to the side. They would only share the good ones. How should we share it? Gano asked. Now they were going to share the treasure so he was very nervous. He wasn't sure whether Gunning and Leng Shouting would agree to share 50-50. After all, he hardly knew them, and it was undeniable that Gunning and Leng Shouting did most of the work. Well, you can take a piece first, 
then we'll take a piece, whether it's valuable or not, it's up to our luck. In that case, none of us will suffer a big loss, Gunning said. Great. They agreed with Gunning happily. They didn't have the thought of sharing the value of the treasure exactly. Sometimes, the same piece could be sold at different prices. If they picked by turns, they could have basically the same value of treasure. In addition, Gunning and Leng Shouting used the most effort to find the treasure. Even if Gunning and Leng Shouting wanted to take 60% of the treasure, they would accept it. After that, they began to share the treasure. At first, they took everything out of the boxes, which left the boxes empty. They shared the jewels first, because Gano and Billy weren't familiar with their value. The pieces they picked were worth less than Gunning and Leng Shouting's, but there wasn't a big difference. When they turned to China, Gano and Billy decided to give all the China to Gunning and Leng Shouting. They liked China, but felt Gunning and Leng Shouting ought to have more given what they had done during this adventure. Gunning happily took it, because this box of China was worth no less than those jewels. In the end, Gano and Billy had two boxes, while Gunning and Leng Shouting had three, including jewels, diamonds, gold, and silver. Because they were very heavy, Gano and Billy couldn't move it. Gunning helped them with one box, and they carried the other. Gano and Billy were very grateful to Gunning for her help. They had seen how strong Gunning was, so they weren't afraid that she would be burdened. Leng Shouting carried the other three boxes alone. In fact, Gunning secretly put away a lot of the treasure into her telepathic eye space when they picked them, so what was left in the boxes wasn't heavy. Moreover, the three boxes were easy for Leng Shouting to carry. With the boxes, they left. When they returned to the entrance at the bottom of the sea, Gunning took out waterproof bags to wrap all the boxes to prevent them from being damaged by the water. Chapter 2909 Did you find the treasure? Gano and Billy didn't realize that Gunning had prepared many tools until this moment. She seemed to have everything they needed in her backpack. Mrs. Leng, you've prepared so many tools in your backpack. I didn't expect you to be so well prepared. Gano said in surprise. I have rich experience, so I know what's needed to do what I want to achieve, Gunning said. Gano and Billy agreed with her on that, because they had witnessed her abilities. It wasn't easy for Gano and Billy to get in here with empty hands earlier, and now it was even more difficult for them to carry the boxes out. They relied on Gunning and Leng Shouting's help to do that. When they were out, Gano and Billy were exhausted. So they didn't go back to the yacht until they had rested for about 10 minutes. During the rest, Gunning made up an excuse and went to the side alone. She met the Flood Dragon and asked it how to get back to where they came from quickly. Even if Gunning and the others went back on their own, they wouldn't get lost, but they would waste too much time on the road. Since the Flood Dragon knew the right way, Gunning decided to ask it. She wasn't an idiot after all. The Flood Dragon told Gunning that the destination was about 500 meters to the right of where they were now, but it was impossible to walk directly from the shore, because there were steep cliffs ahead. After knowing the basic location and direction, Gunning and the others could successfully get there. An hour later, they finally saw the yacht. Gano and Billy were extremely relieved, although they said nothing. They had actually been worried that they might get lost. They believed in Gunning and Leng Shouting's abilities, but it was unavoidable for them to worry. After getting aboard the yacht, they left. It had been almost six hours since they set off. They set off at 8 p.m., and now it was just 1 a.m. However, halfway through the misty sea, they encountered a yacht, which was the one they saw in front of the thick fog. Originally, Gunning and the others planned to go around, not wanting to meet those people, to avoid unnecessary trouble, but suddenly they heard a quarrel, and it was very serious. The quarrel happened because they couldn't get out of here. Among them, there were people from Country Hua. Leng Shouting was a soldier, so he had to do something to protect people from Country Hua. Without delay, he drove towards the yacht. When he got closer, the group of people heard the sound of the yacht moving over. They stopped quarreling and turned to look in that direction. Due to the thick fog, they heard the sound before seeing the yacht. The yacht seemed to be very fast, so they were afraid that they might be hit, but they couldn't see where the yacht was, and it was impossible for them to avoid it. They could only prepare to move away if the yacht was going to knock into them. They weren't surprised that there were other yachts on this sea. Luckily, 
the yacht didn't hit them. Anyway, many people had heard the rumor about the treasure, so they weren't the only treasure hunters. At the same time, they were curious to know whether other people had found the treasure. Therefore, a man directly asked, Hey, did you find the treasure? No. Gunning replied, she wouldn't be honest with them. If Gunning said yes, they might not be convinced and would probably rather believe that nobody could find the treasure. After all, it was so hard to find the treasure and they had been lost for hours in the mist. They could not even find the small island. Therefore, they believed that Gunning and the others were in the same situation. Are you going back? The man asked again, it's not easy to find the treasure, and we're not sure whether there is really treasure, so yes, we're going back. If you want to return as well, you can follow us. If not, we'll leave alone, but it's very dangerous to stay on the sea. You might easily encounter trouble, Gunning said. If they wanted to go back too, she was willing to lead them out. Do you even know the right way out? We've been lost for hours. Who do you think you are? Another man said disdainfully, he didn't believe that Gunning and the others had the ability to leave this place, because they couldn't. Not everyone is like you. We obviously know the right way out. If you don't want to leave, then forget it, Gunning retorted. She was willing to do them a favor, but they weren't grateful. You. The man was mad and glared at Leng Shouting. Leng Shouting gave him a cold glance as well, which made him stiffine a little. The next moment, he avoided Leng Shouting's gaze because he was scared. Shut up. The first man snapped at the second man. You can stay here if you don't want to leave. I'll leave. I. The second man felt embarrassed, but didn't know what to say. He wanted to go back too, but didn't trust Gunning. Do you really know the right way out? The first man asked. He was also doubtful, but he was willing to try. Of course, Gunning said. Then she signaled Leng Shouting to leave. She didn't care whether they followed them or not, boss. Several people turned to look at their leader for his opinion. Follow them. The leader ordered at once, then a man drove their yacht to catch up quickly. Leng Shouting didn't drive fast, but the speed wasn't slow, so the group of people was left behind since they didn't drive fast. As a result, they were dissatisfied. Are they trying to get rid of us? Didn't they say that they're willing to lead us out? I think they fooled us, right? The man who was driving the yacht replied, then drive faster. Their leader ordered. He was also mad at Leng Shouting, but it was their fault that they didn't dare to drive quickly. Chapter 2910 You're useless, but the fog here is too thick. I don't dare to drive faster. The driver answered, they dare to. Why can't you do the same? You're useless. Their leader was mad. He couldn't blame Leng Shouting, so he vented his anger on the man who was driving the yacht. The man was aggrieved, but said nothing. He immediately sped up and soon saw Leng Shouting and the others. In fact, as long as they drove as fast as Leng Shouting, there wouldn't be any problem. I went him minutes later, they finally got out of the thick fog, which surprised everyone. They didn't expect to leave it so quickly. When they were out, Leng Shouting drove at an extremely high speed leaving them behind. He didn't care what would happen to them afterwards. How did they get in and out so easily? Did they find the treasure? An idea dawned on one man. They wouldn't believe it if Leng Shouting told them that they had found the treasure earlier, but now they began to think it was possible. I don't think so. It's so hard to find the treasure, another man replied. It's hard, but it doesn't mean it's impossible. They didn't seem disappointed at all when they said they failed to find the treasure. One man pointed out, do you mean they have found the treasure, whether they found it or not, catch up with them now. Their leader ordered, he was unwilling to accept the result without knowing the truth. They weren't grateful for Leng Shouting's help, on the contrary, they decided to scheme against them. Without delay, they sped up. Unfortunately, Leng Shouting and the others were already far away and they drove very fast. It was impossible for the yacht which was left behind to catch up to them. Gunning and Leng Shouting noticed their change. They were displeased, and felt that they shouldn't have helped them. They couldn't receive a signal until they were far away from the island, at which time Gano saw several missed calls from his grandfather. His grandfather understood that there wasn't any signal after they went further into the sea, but he still called Gano because of his worry. Gano immediately called his grandfather back, 
Even though it was already 2 a.m., Gano's grandfather was astonished to hear that they had found and retrieved the treasure smoothly. He understood that Gano couldn't have done it alone because he knew his grandson's abilities very well. Therefore, he was amazed by the skills of the people who went with Gano. They were so strong that Gano's grandfather was worried that they would keep the treasure for themselves. However, he didn't ask about that, because Leng Shouting might hear them and get mad if they got angry they might really keep the treasure for themselves. When Gunning and the others were back at the shore, the group of people was still far behind. They had totally lost Leng Shouting. Because of that, those people were angry. After the yacht stopped by the shore, Gunning and Leng Shouting carried their stuff and returned to their house. Gano and Billy also went home. When Gano and Billy were alone, Gano called his grandfather again. Although his grandfather didn't ask much about their adventure, he understood that his grandfather was worried. Therefore, he told his grandfather what they had been through, and his grandfather was relieved. In fact, the Tyler family didn't lack money, but Gano wanted to go on an adventure, so his grandfather allowed him to do so. In addition, no one would say no to getting more money. Dot. Back in the house, Leng Shouting gave everything to Gunning and she put it in her telepathic eye space. Are you tired? Leng Shouting asked with concern. Not at all, Gunning replied. Great, then let's take a shower and go to bed, Leng Shouting said. Then he pulled Gunning and walked to the bedroom. That night, they didn't have sex. Although she said she wasn't tired, he still wanted her to have a good rest, so he hugged her to sleep. Dot. The next morning, Gano and Billy went to the beach outside Gunning and Leng Shouting's house. Gunning and Leng Shouting met them again when they went for a walk. They came to invite Gunning and Leng Shouting to share a meal. They had already shared the treasure and Gunning and Leng Shouting got more, but they wouldn't have gotten any without Gunning and Leng Shouting's help. Therefore, they felt that they should buy Gunning and Leng Shouting a meal to thank them. Anyway, Gunning and Leng Shouting needed to eat. So they accepted the invitation, and the restaurant wasn't far away. Gunning had eaten seafood for days, but she could never have enough. Therefore, after asking for her opinion, they decided to have seafood. Two more days later, Gunning and Leng Shouting went home. Everything was fine in the capital, and their wedding photos had already been sent to the studio for editing, so by the time Gunning and Leng Shouting were back, the wedding photos were done. They took the photos back and placed them in their house at Midlevels Mansion. Leng Shouting decided to use the house at Midlevels Mansion as their wedding house. Because he had many houses, there was no need to buy a new one. He was rich, but he wouldn't just waste money. Moreover, he bought the house at Midlevels Mansion only a few years ago. He rarely stayed there, so it was basically new. Leng Shouting only stayed in the capital for one day then went back to their military base. As for their wedding, the senior generation would make the arrangements. There was nothing for Gunning and Leng Shouting to be worried about. They only needed to provide their preferences. Gunning decided to listen to her family since she didn't want to do all the things by herself. Anyway, Jing Yun Ya and the others would give her the best. She would receive the best treatment. When Chu Pei Hun and the others heard that Gunning was back, they asked her out for a meal. However, Chu Pei Hun was popular now, so she had fans and haters. Some haters even swore at her. As a result, accidents sometimes happened. Because Chu Pei Hun didn't live in the school and had bought her own house, she lived outside now. 